Cherry's Tigo 8 Pro, the big brother of the Cherry range in South Africa, launched, what, a month ago? I did a review at the launch as well when we got to drive it. It's the big one in the range. Very distinctive Cherry front end with interesting front draw. Certainly bold and stands out. You can see it over here. Your headlights over here, for example, daytime running lights. I did find the power of the headlights at night, maybe. Not quite what I'm used to, but maybe that was just me. Interesting venting over here, air circulation, etc. And of course you've got what everyone wants is the treatment to make this look like it could go off-road if you wanted it to. Big and bold. SUV, of course. So, of course, you immediately come across the side. You see the bold cladding around the wheel arches. You see down at the bottom and even the silver strips over there along the side. Nice dual-color mag wheels, 18 inches, and they fill the arches quite nicely. Do a good job. This is a long, long vehicle. You can see it. And you come across over here. Look at the width of the C pillar because of the seven seater factor, of course. So it's not a criticism in any form or means whatsoever. Come around to the tail. You have got your rear LEDs and you can see they come all the way around and flash like this for locking, unlocking, etc., etc. The locking with the key over here is quite sensitive as I move around the car, you may notice, and it seems to be locking and unlocking itself at will, but let's not worry too much about that. You pop open the boot over here, obviously automated, and look over here, this is quite an interesting feature. In a place nicely concealed over here is, of course, your parcel shelf that you can fit in the back over there to pull over the rear to conceal your luggage when you want to do that. So I like that. And then of course, what you do over here, look at the size of the boot in five seater format. It is massive, isn't it? You can have a look and you can see exactly how far I can go into the boot. This is a very, very big boot for a five seater car. But if you need seven seater mode, well, it's as simple as pulling that up over there, but then you get the normal, and I can't criticize this car for it, no boot in seven seater. What you do get that I like is the fact you've got an additional 12 volt socket in the boot area over there. Very useful if you're going camping or anything like that, you want to use a camping fridge or anything similar. So nice feature there as well. Press the button of course, and the tailgate will close. Two mean looking exhausts on the sides over there and of course the diffuser effect down at the bottom. Most people think this car is powered by a two litre engine and it feels like it on the road because it feels like it's got power. But interestingly, it's a 1.6 litre petrol turbo engine. But that 290 over there, nope, sorry, it's not the kilowatts. We can always wish, can't we? That's the newton meters of torque. So 290 newton meters, that's 145 kilowatts, which is a lot for a 1.6. And it certainly does give very, very decent performance from that motor. Let's see what it's like on the road, inside, and everything else that you want to see. On the road, the ride is smooth, it's comfortable, it's relaxed, and I want to use that word relaxed. Because look, this is quite a big car. It's meant to be a biggish car. And it's a family car, so you want a relaxed cruise, don't you? It's got everything you want, it's got everything you need, it's got plenty of power for when you want it. But obviously, when you're driving around in suburbia, you've got to watch your power and you've got to watch what cars are doing in front of you. Sometimes rather strange things, but that's beside the point, just be aware all the time. But everything about this car is pretty smooth. If I've got to criticize anything, you'll feel in a moment that when you're traveling a little bit slower, I've sometimes found the gear shifts maybe a little bit not as smooth as some cars I've found. And particularly if you're trying to accelerate away from a standstill, let me just 
stop for a moment and do a start. We're not doing a drag start or anything or a timed 100 meters, but I just want to show you that if I do this, you may notice I've had smoother gear shifts in my life. But that is when you are pushing it hard. When I'm cruising like I am now, you don't even feel them. Seven speed dual clutch automatic, and it certainly does a lovely, lovely job of it. It does have eco mode and sport mode. Quite honestly, I didn't even bother with them over this test. I've just left it in what they term normal mode, and I've just relaxed. Because this is that kind of car in my book. It's light enough to drive. Obviously, it's not a tiny little city car, but it's light, it's easy, it's comfortable. And for the category it's in, a seven-seater, as you'll see just now, it certainly is a comfort and a pleasure to drive overall. It irons out the bumps, it takes out all the situations like that. It handles a fairly bad piece of road, I think, quite decently. Let's see what it does in my u-turn test and i've got a feeling this is going to require an extra maneuver aha uh -huh. i was right but i don't think it's a harsh criticism of this car either quite honestly i think it's quite fair considering the size of the car so on the road just i think the word just keeps coming to me it's comfortable it's a cruiser and it does that job very very well Moving into the back seats, or in some cases the middle row, look at this legroom. This is space. But an interesting feature is, because you've got seats behind, I can, and this can be done one-third, two-thirds, I can adjust this seat to allow for somebody behind me. So you can move this middle row forwards or back. But obviously, if you're in five-seater mode, you want as much legroom as you can. Look at this headroom. It's really, really good, even with the panoramic roof, doesn't affect it whatsoever. The tan leather, you can see it very nicely now. It really does look very good and very neat. Nice big armrest over here with cup holders, you would expect. And Isofix on the outer two seats. These are all features you expect and you get. Coming to the center over here, you've got nice air conditioning vents over here for the middle row and below you've got a usb port over there as well so your middle passengers are catered for middle stroke rear seat passengers big pockets in the back of the seats here as well so they are pretty neat and certainly catering for family use for family travels or anything like that that you may want and i say family it could be five it could be seven the choice is yours the biggest test is always access to the rearmost seats. So how does it work on the Tigos 8? Well, you pull a lever over there on the side of the seat, it drops down nice and flat. You then move the seat forward as far as you can. And then there is a little bit of climbing to be done. So I go like that, I climb over and across and in I get. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised. There's pretty good legroom. I have got that seat as far forward as it goes, I showed you just now, the middle row. So I've got plenty of legroom. Headroom, well, uh, Restricted, shall we just call it that? But you've got a nice armrest and cup holder back here. And on this side over here, you've got separate on executive aircon control for this third row of seats. I would not call this suitable for adults. I would call it more than suitable for youngsters. I think that's the way to put it. Now let's see what it's like getting back out of here for me. Well, I think this is going to take a little bit of contortion. 
but maybe you do that and then that and then that and then hey I think I'll leave it to the kids in future jumping in behind the wheel let's show you of course the most important figure of all 9.7 liters per hundred that's the average I've got over this test period not the lightest in the world but you've got to again accept this is a big car it's a seven seater etc etc it's not a bad figure at all I don't believe you of course can scroll through all your different functions on your screen etc it's it's very standard so I'm not even going to show you everything now I don't think that's really the most important to show you but you know what it's like you've of course got all the buttons on the steering wheel for everything you want and of course you've got active cruise control on the side as well so they're all there present and correct and you can do your thing with all of them you've got auto on headlights you can see your headlights over here and there's an auto switch over there auto for the wipers as well these are all functions and features you would expect now down here to the right of the steering wheel you've got a couple of buttons as well and you've got a hill descent control which again I don't know how often you're going to use but it's there and of course you can switch off the stop start function if that's what you want quite honestly I very often do that as I'm sure you're aware because I generally do not like them buttons over there there is auto locking on pull off but there's your buttons to lock and unlock the doors and you've got this interesting effect over here on the doors with the leather and stitching across the top of the doors and of course over the whole dashboard effect etc so you've got all of that you come over of course now to the main screen and let me show you a few features on the screen quickly of course you press over there and that gives you your home screen and you've got everything you want you've obviously as a, you can see got Android Auto you've got all of these features that are so important to drivers these days but just keep the camera on the screen quickly because I want to just put the car into reverse and show you some very interesting features that I think are quite something on this car here's your reverse camera there's your overhead view but press the next button and there's your 3d effect you can see the car almost floating over there watch this when I open my door it shows you the door opening even on the screen I just find this quite fascinating maybe it's a toy I don't know but something else you can actually spin the car around if you want on the 3d how's that but then you can go one further and you can go to a front wide view to show you what's going on in front of you or a rear wide view so this camera system is something else in my book and it really is pretty spectacular so you've got all of that over there you've got I mentioned the modes for the transmission you come down you've got obviously your stop start button you would expect that below here you've got a secondary screen for your ventilation system and it works very well you can actually change for example I've got the airflow coming you can see middle I can change it to middle and legs and head if I want etc and that's how you change your airflow for example different but it does work interestingly you've got dual zone for the two sides of the car and here for example look here if my passenger wants to increase the temperature simply use this little push button over here and fan speed same thing and you've got the same for the driver on the driver's side I think they're pretty neat and I think they work very very well your seven speed dual clutch automatic it's simply push forward for reverse pull backwards for drive you've got a manual mode if you really want I really don't know who would want interestingly no flappy paddles but park is just press the little button over there and you're in park simple as that you've got the electronic parking brake and all nice and easy and there you go slot over here for your cell phone if you want to keep it over there or of course you've got cup holders and you've got a nice big armrest console over there with two USBs so they're all there coming back to the dashboard let's have a look you've of course got this leather effect across the dashboard stitching etc now going to executive from distinction spec distinctive spec that is where you get a few upgrades you get the two-tone leather trim instead of simply black leather so you've got the tan and black throughout the car 
Sony sound system. You can see very nice sound system, works very well. And you get, of course, the panoramic roof, which is very, very important. On executive, you also get features like, and we'll look at them along the way, but you do get air conditioning vents for the third row of seats even, right at the back, for the people in the cheap seats, as I like to call it. I mentioned the panoramic roof, privacy glass, you get wireless charging, you get various items like that for your extra money on the executive version as opposed to the distinction version. Those are choices only you can make. Powered by that two, that 1.6 litre turbo engine, 145 kilowatts, 290 newton meters, both versions have that. So that's <coughs> standard on both and you can see which one, that doesn't make any difference, which version you take. Seven seater, well, you've now got the Hyundai Grand Creta, which is a little bit smaller than this, but in the same sort of category, because this one fits somehow in between. Or you've got the VW Tiguan Allspace, which will cost you quite a lot more than this one. I say quite a lot because specking is the point. And remember, this is spec to the hilt, so you'd have to spec a Tiguan Allspace to the same level <coughs> to compare. So difficult one to decide. There are a few little points I'd like to point out that maybe I would complain about on this car. The fuel consumption, I think, is a touch heavy, but it is still quite a new car. It's only just done 3,000 kilometers. Something else I did notice is night driving. I feel the headlights possibly are not as great as I would like them to be. And then there's one last thing that I cannot quite understand on this car. And that is when you look in the rear view mirror, it looks like you're looking down a tunnel. It somehow shrinks. I don't know what it does, but it makes the back of the car look like it's miles and miles away from you. And you're looking through a little tunnel. And that's just a very weird effect that I did not particularly like find a little bit strange but anyway it's not a serious factor you've got reverse cameras you've got all those things so it doesn't matter but just something I really think I should point out on this car but beyond that your standard warranty five years 150,000 kilometers your service plan five years 60,000 kilometers and of course that extended warranty for the first owner only of 10 years 1 million kilometers is just something that Cherry have come out with to make the offering quite amazing and quite unique. You're in the market, you need a car, seven seater occasionally, or five seater with very big boot. You would do yourself a disservice if you don't go and look at this one. For Motor Matters, I'm Alan R. I'll see you next time.